I'm Jenny Tellick and I'm back in race control, nice and dry while the Volvo Ocean Race teams are taking quite a beating on this day two of leg four to Auckland. Team Alvi Medica's onboard reporter Amy Ross said this morning even, on a discomfort scale of one to 10, I'd say we're firmly pinned at an 11, <laughs> which is kind of an awesome quote. And we actually get great quotes like that every day. Um, if you haven't seen them yet, they're on the From the Blogs section of our website, so check them out. And here on board Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing, a little taste of what it's like with Luke Parkinson. Getting used to the sounds now, but um, sort of really loud crashing and banging. It gets a bit tedious when you're trying to sleep, but you do get used to which noises are good and which ones are bad. Um, we got more good ones and bad ones so far, but uh, touch wood. <laughs> I'm guessing that last one was a good sound. Uh, we've put a full video out about the conditions online and also a great short clip about Wolf getting completely washed off the pedestal and into the lured wheel. So make sure to check those out. And then now, from behind the safety of our screens, let's see what the virtual eye looked like for the last 24 hours. The big news overnight was that as they drag race due east, the reshifted left further than forecast, and Team Brunel used that to switch sides on the fleet, going from southernmost to almost northernmost boat in a 12-hour span. We had meant to call Team SCA as the northernmost boat, but since their new onboard reporter has been feeling that well in these conditions, we called Bauer Becking, skipper of Team Brunel. Bauer, thanks for joining us. Two quick questions. Overnight, you switched from southernmost boat to almost northernmost. What's your reasoning behind that? Well, I have to tell you, I have to kill you, but uh, it's, uh, it's basically because uh, there's a weather pattern developing and uh, and I think uh, during the night you will see uh, some action uh, from this boat, so there's a reason behind this. Okay, so that was my second question. When you were in China, you said you were going to be the boat going north and northeast towards Auckland. I saw you drop your little buoys. Um, is, are you telling us you're going to be making that call? In the last race, uh, Puma went nearly to Japan, so hopefully we're not going that fast north, but uh, maybe just Taiwan is good enough. Next up, we called Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing navigator, Simon Fisher. Yeah, we've got about between 24 and 28 knots now, and uh, we're probably just getting to the windiest bit as we go across here to the uh, Luzon Strait. And uh, yeah, sometimes the sea state's pretty heinous. It can uh, be a bit like being the inside of a washing machine at times. But uh, well, this, this last hour's been a bit nicer. It's been a bit more organized. But we definitely go through periods when, when the current changes, where it gets really quite messy and it's... Uh, Yes, it's, it's quite, quite an operation to make sure you don't slam the boat too much. So you're one of the drivers. How do you, what is the operation? How do you drive around the waves, or can you do that on an upwind? Um, yeah, you, you're just basically trying to find a balance between, uh, you know, the best performance going the way you want and, uh, and looking after the boat. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you have to, to compromise a bit, maybe sail a bit lower or, or a bit slower just to make sure you don't launch the boat and slam too much. But, uh, okay, so speaking of sailing a bit lower, you're the southernmost boat of the fleet. What's the reasoning behind that? Um, we sort of always always planned to try and be the lured boat. We should get more, uh, we should be more lifted to lured. I think, unfortunately, it hasn't hasn't played out as much as the, uh, the weather models would have suggested with, uh, you know, some of the fleet going quite fast to weather of us. But, uh, I think as we get into the point, we should get a header, and uh, that should set us up quite nicely. And hopefully, we'll come out really strong on starboard when we come away from the from the headland. So, uh, for now, we're pretty happy, and uh, hopefully, you know, it, it will look even better as the hours go on. Fingers crossed. <laughs> as the hours went on for us, the question is sure was who was going to tack first once they got the header, and it was Team SCA, quickly followed by Team Brunel. The great news was Annalena, the new onboard reporter, was able to set up a live X for us right away from down below with Sally Barco on deck. Okay, so we're calling. Obviously, you guys just made a big move, and looking on your boat, you're on starboard tack now. What's the thought process? Yeah, so we just um, we're starting to see a big header finally. So we just took the chance to head north and. Uh, we're thinking the breeze is going to slowly start to decrease here, but we just hit a nice big band of pressures, 28, 30 knots, and uh, I don't know yet. Actually, I haven't heard if anybody else has come with us, but 
think the thought is that we're heading to more of a, a header, so leading on the shift, and then we'll be looking for another lefty as we go uh, in another couple hours. Cool, and then do you think you guys will tack back and go sort of the direct route towards Auckland, or we keep talking about this north-northeast route that worked in the last, last race, but what, do you know what you're doing from here? Um, I think that does look really good right now, uh, but we're sort of just weighing up the options. I think a little bit the weather uh, is a bit different than what we've had on our on our files because we had so much further left all the way across. Um, but I think it's a good sign that we hooked into this bit of a righty, take it north, and I think the plan is to yeah take the north northeaster route. Nice. Okay. Thanks, Sal. Um, enjoy your night. We'll talk to you soon. And could you pass no this problem, back Jenny. to Anna Elena? Sure. Take care. Cool. Thanks. Cheers. See ya. All right. Annalena is here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you for a second. It's your first leg offshore, and it's a brutal one so far. How are you coping physically and mentally? It's uh, mentally, I'm uh, still stoked about the whole thing. Physically, I'm struggling quite a lot. It's it's kind of rough. I mean, I've been sitting in an office for a half a year, and suddenly I end up in uh, in a roller coaster, and it's like going up and down and sideways, and yeah, it's uh, it's a challenge. But I'm I'm happy to be here, so I'm not complaining. But uh, it is tough. <laughs> Well, that is a perfect analogy, though, from the office to the roller coaster. Um, can we ask, this is a super awkward, gross question, but I'm assuming you have been uh, feeding the fish, as my dad always called it. Do, can you count how many times that's happened, or is it, has it been too many to count over the past couple of days? I think I lost uh, counting, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, as, soon as, I, as soon as I put something in my mouth, it comes up again. <laughs> But uh, yeah, hopefully, I'm, I'm feeling better now. Um, so uh, we'll see. I had an orange not long ago and it's still in my belly. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Well, good to hear her orange stay down, even if only for 30 minutes. We'll leave you now on board the orange boat, Team Avi Medica, for hopefully the last of our feeding the fish jokes as the teams enter calmer waters and more reaching conditions overnight. And I'll see you Thursday for the next Inside Track. <laughs> Dave, how are we all holding up out here? Pretty good. I don't think your body's meant to uh, do this for days on end, but I haven't seen too many people vomiting. Maybe the, the guy behind the camera's had a little sneaky one, but I'm not too sure. <laughs>